Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not really sure what he said. I speak English mostly, and uh, hopefully he said good things about me, and it's great to be here. I'm going to be talking to you about the latest trends going on in search, and basically talk about the evolution of search and how we're kind of going back to our roots, and how traditional marketing fits into all of that. So this is a little bit about me. I'm not sure what he said, but just so you have my background, I'm the uh, news editor um, at Search Engine Land, one of the authorities on search. I founded a site on search engines called the Search Engine Roundtable in 2003. I've been writing about search engines uh, for close to 10 years now. Uh, I also chair one of the search marketing events uh, called Search Marketing Expo. And I am the owner of a company called Rusty Brick, uh, which is a web development software company. We also do a lot of iPhone apps and mobile marketing. Uh, plus, I've been cited in a lot of places, so hopefully I know what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of these concepts comes from uh, my team at Search in the Land. This is Danny Sullivan. He's the renowned authority on search and how it works. So a lot of the definitions I'm giving to you come from our team and Danny Sullivan. So I'm going to take you again. I thought the best way to describe where search is going in the future is to talk a little bit about how search evolved over the past, you know, 10 or 15 years. And, and I'm going to then go into how you can incorporate these changes and these trends and evolution of search into your tra traditional marketing means. So Yahoo launched as a directory. Yahoo was back in 95. It wasn't necessarily a search engine, but it had this pretty much this directory listing. Web uh, humans actually went ahead and found web pages that they loved, and they incorporated those web pages directly into uh, a directory, a category of, of structure. It's called a, you know they categorize these web pages, and they found these things and they went ahead and ranked them manually. Human, humans actually ranked them. The problem with that is it wasn't so scalable. There wasn't a way for a human group of people to actually go ahead and document and classify every single web page out there. The, the, the web was just too infinite. So during this time, there was also um, new search engines that were coming out. Computerized search engines. This is the Search Point 10, which uh, Search 1.0, which is basically contextual search engines. They basically looked at the text on the page. Um, and they crawled the web automatically with these robots and spiders and algorithms to find new content. Um, and that new content was only stored into an index, but they only looked at the text on the page. The problem with this was, looking at only these on-page criteria, was that as an SEO, a search engine optimization expert, people who wanted to rank well for computers, per se, would then just pretty much write the word computers on their home page or on any page they wanted to rank well for and just constantly repeat the word computers, computers, computers. The problem with that is sites like HP and Dell wouldn't rank number one for computers. They wouldn't be in the first page because you had these SEO um, people who took advantage of this real estate and went ahead and tried to target this. So there had to be a way to actually get HP and Dell to rank well. And that's where Google came. Google, not only Google, but John Kleinberg hits algorithm, but Google came up with the concept of page rank, looking at links, um, the whole web as a whole, and looking how web pages actually interact with each other and link to each other. Google um, came up with a search 2.0 revolution, which is basically looking, like I said, at the link structure of the web, what page A is linking to page B about, and what those links say about each other. And that solved the problem of, even though Dell at one point didn't have the word computer on the page, Google was smart enough to know that that page should actually rank on the first page of the Google search results for computer because the way the web linked to it, the way other web pages linked to that page. And that's where the concept of authorities and citations and links actually came, became popular. And that was the search 2.0 revolution. And then we moved into the search 3.0 revolution, which was several years later. Um, and it basically helped improve what was the stale web uh, search results page. All you used to get when you used to do a search at Google or at um, Yahoo or these search engines was basically get 10 blue links. It was kind of boring. You got web results. Um, you went to a search engine, and you just went ahead and searched. And all you did was get like, these 10 results. So what we did was that we saw kind of in search, in search 3.0 were vertical results, vertical search engines started to, be, to get vertical results within the web results. What that means is um, you used to get, you do a search today in Google, you'll get video results in your web results. You'll get news results. You'll get shopping results. You'll get a tremendous amount of different variety, uh, variety of results, uh, results, including maps and everything, right in, the, in, the, in that space where there used to be just 10 blue links. And that depends on the query. And a lot of people said, 
Google didn't invent this. This actually came back from Ask, Ask.com, under Jim Lanzone, when he was the CEO there. They came out with something called Ask3D, which really was one of the first search engines to actually go ahead and mainstream search engines to actually do this. Then Bing came out with theirs, and everybody was wowed by Bing. And then Google came out with their own concept, the Google Universal Search. Google Universal Search got a lot of bad rep from, from the press because everybody's saying they copied Bing. In reality, I mean, they all copy each other, and Ask.com was really the main search engine that actually did this first. So as you can see from this chart, Google's old model, you had indexes for everything. You had a web index, you had an image index, you had a news index, you had a video index. If you wanted image results, you used to go to Google Images. If you wanted news results, you went to Yahoo News or Google News. You didn't go to Google.com and search and expect to get news or images. That happened later on. And now with the universal model, as you can see over here, you get sprinkles of all these types of different vertical search results all in one interface. Um, it depends on the query you're doing, the search results. If you search for something, um, I'll show you examples, you will get different types of vertical results. Here's an example, dentist. I did a search for dentist uh, a couple weeks ago. I got, an, I got, temp, I got my, my standard web results, which you can see is a Wikipedia page and some other results, 1-800-dentist.com, popular website. But also, you get news results. There was an article about an old uh, woman in Florida about something going on with the dentist. I got a news result uh, about that right in the web results. I also got local results. The Google knows exactly where I am, and it's sending me these results that you know, help me find a dentist using Google Maps, Google Places, which is you know, what's happening here. And then you have uh, video results. I you know, did a search to how, to how to clean a microwave. And the best way to learn how to clean something or to do something is to actually see somebody actually do it. You actually look at a video of somebody else doing it, not just reading a document about it. It's actually see somebody doing it. And videos tend to rank very well these days for how-to types of queries. So that's search 3.0. So before I get into where we are now with Search 4.0, I want to just really define what is Search. Search is basically you're asking a question and you're getting an answer. The answers could be in the form of web results, they could be in the form of videos or images or whatever it might be, or they could be in the form of ads, which you see on the right-hand side. That could be an answer as well. Like I was introduced, I'm very involved in the Search marketing community. Um, search marketing is, the, is when you're actually, you're actually trying to go ahead and rank in these results. It's, it's working to be found, and this is a definition by Sandy Sullivan, working to be found when someone um, overtly expresses a need for a, or a desire. Somebody specifically saying, I need X, and you're, giving, and you're trying to rank or f come up for when somebody actually asks uh, ask for a specific need or desire. It could be doing a search in Google. It could be shaking your phone to find a, a restaurant. Or it could be taking a picture using Google goggles to try to translate something or find the cross street. It could be any of these forms. You're asking a question, and you're getting an answer by searching in these forms. SEO is, within search engine marketing, it's being found on the left-hand side, the, the, the blue thing here, being found in the free listings. On the right-hand side, that's not SEO, that's ads, and that's search engine marketing. SEO is a component of search engine marketing, just as a definition. So when we talk about search 4.0, we're going to talk a lot about social media. So let me just show you some examples of social media, because it means a lot of things. Social network sites like Facebook allows friends to uh, you know, talk to each other, allows friends to ask each other questions and advice. It's very, very useful. We got uh, social bookmarking sites like StumbleUpon and Delicious. These sites um, let you share bookmarks and, and, and tag them with friends and stuff. So it's another form of sharing, communicating with friends. You got uh, social news sites like Dig and Reddit, people sharing and voting up news. You got social knowledge sites like Yahoo Answers and Wikipedia. And you got social sharing sites like Yelp helping you do restaurant reviews, Foursquare helping you, uh, you know, share your location and where you've been and sharing tips on those locations. And of course, Twitter, um, which lets you share anything and everything about you. All right, so this is where Search 4.0 comes into play. Um, Search 4.0 is incorporating these, these elements of social, your friends, your networks of friends, and incorporating that into the search results. And it's not just about ranking based on text, ranking based on links or citations or, or the content on your page. It's about using this network of, of, of your friends, of the social network, and actually re-ranking re -ranking results based on your social network. It includes showing, you know, using Twitter or Facebook or using 
Reddit or, or TweetPeaks. That's what it's really about now. These results are actually now by Google and Bing being re-ranked based on your social network. There it goes. Again, so social search is search results influenced by your social sites. It's not just search results influenced by your social network, your specific friends, although it is. It's also search, social search results influenced by the global, global social network. So Bing knows exactly what people in general like on Facebook, and they might use that even if your friends don't like certain things. They might use the global network to actually uh, look at search results. What social search is not, it is not searching social content. It's search results being influenced by social networks. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Here's an example of a search for Obama I did a few weeks ago. And you can see in the top right in the news result, I have an arrow in the top right that shows the number of times this was shared by people globally. And this is a Twitter, I think this is pulling from Twitter and also from Google Reader. And it shows that this news article was shared 10 times. If I click on that, it'll take me to the real time results and the social results. And you see in the bottom, I follow Barack Obama, his Twitter account. And you can see that Google knows that, and it's saying, Barack Obama shared this, and it knows. It actually knows. Google knows that Barack Obama shared this. And over here in the middle, the Wikipedia page, there's that little plus one button. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but Google's kind of aiming towards kind of creating a new Facebook type of system for sharing and liking. Here's the same type of query on Bing. Um, Bing has something Google doesn't have. It has Facebook data, which is something that Google really wants, but they can't necessarily get at this point. And you can see the bottom result is whitehouse.gov. About, oh, I don't know, 13 or so of my friends actually like this. It says right here in the bottom, these are the people that liked this page, and there were nine other friends on my Facebook network that actually like it as well. And Bing has actually, since February, um, a couple months ago, started to use Facebook data to re-rank results. Very important. Plus, Bing is actually incorporating ways to share search results within, Bing it's, within Facebook itself. Not only that, I typed in Spain, just curious, and it happens to, uh, Bing tells me that I actually had a friend, a Facebook friend, that actually lived in Spain for a period of time. Let's see. And I discussed a little, a little bit more about the, face, uh, the Google Plus One button, which was launched a couple months ago in the Google search results. And you can see the top result shows that three people in my Google social network plus one this Google.com homepage. Two of those happen to be Googlers people who work at Google, and one is a big-time Google lover. So it's interesting to see only three people actually plus one did. Um, but also, Google rolled out this button just last month, or actually last week, I believe, to um, publishers to place on their website. So now you can have the share, Facebook share button, tweet this, or Facebook like button, and the plus one button. This stuff is actually being used by Google to actually re-rank results. So it's, it's, a algorithm, it's in their algorithm for ranking. I discussed earlier that, real t uh, that um, social search is not searching real-time content. It's not, um, it's not searching these types of content, social media content. That is real-time search. What is real-time content before I get into that? Real-time content is basically um, um, producing content in a very, very short period of time. So here's an example. I got pulled over by a cop for speeding. Um, I was upset, but I figured, you know, I'll get some fi uh, Twitter followers after it. So I went ahead and took a uh, picture and tweeted it out. It got tons of, obviously, you know, retweets and stuff, but it took me a second to do that. I didn't, like, review it, obviously, who, who actually goes ahead and tells people publicly that they got pulled over a cop. I did it without thinking, published it, and it's out there. It takes very little time, and that's real-time content. Real-time search is searching content that's published in real time. That means searching Google Buzz, Twitter, Facebook updates. That's real-time search engines search real-time content. Here's an example of a Google real-time search result. You can see I did a search for St. Louis um, a couple weeks. My in-laws actually live in St. Louis, and a couple weeks ago, St. Louis had some tremendous tornadoes. So I was curious what's going on. You can see in the top right, it says timeline. You can see a lot of people were actually tweeting about St. Louis throughout that day, and you see those spikes. It actually shows you what people are searching for. Um, uh, in real-time search. I just defined real-time search on the left, and you get this chart. And it's showing me that people are saying, oh, thank God my family is okay in St. Louis. These tornadoes were horrible. And it's just, that's searching real-time. There's no real ranking algorithm. There's no real um, finding the best results in real-time. You could do relevancy, but it's really searching the latest stuff that's being pushed out to Google on real-time. This is mostly Twitter. But Bing, as you can see, also has 
real-time search. They actually call it social search, but it's really real-time search. And you can see here, the latest stuff on Bing shows you results from Twitter and Facebook. Again, St. Louis, um, people talking about the tornado that just happened. Facebook too, you can you go to Facebook, you can use the search box, and way, way, way down there, you can, see, you can actually see a, a link to post by everybody. I don't think anybody actually uses this, but it's there, and you can actually search real-time content on Facebook as well. And also on Twitter, this is the old Twitter search results. You were able to search real-time content on Twitter as well. And on June 1st, uh, Twitter actually changed their search results to be more relevant. They changed their algorithm. So it's no longer just the latest tweets. It's actually now the best tweets plus the latest tweets. So you can see here on the left-hand side, you'll see a search results snippet that shows uh, I did a search on Twitter for the keyword Google. I want to see what people are talking about, on Google, about Google on Twitter. And you can see on the left-hand side, I did a search, and you'll see that there's minutes between search results. And this is, Google, this is Twitter actually saying these are the most relevant results for Twitter at this time. On the right-hand side, you'll see um, pretty much three of the same exact links. It's just showing me all their Twitter results, and it's just duplicate content. It's, re it's all repeated. Not so useful. So Google, uh, Twitter actually made it more useful. And also, Twitter is actually personalizing these, these results. Twitter is actually saying, all right, I know who you follow. I'm going to go ahead and show you people you follow more often than people you don't follow. So that's the evolution of search. We had search 1.0, um, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. We're at this place where all these things are incorporated and we're becoming more human. We're becoming more human in our, and we're going back to those web directory days where humans are actually, our social networks are actually um, making a difference in our, in, our, in our search results. So how do you, as a marketer, go ahead and use traditional marketing means to impact the search results, especially search marketing 4.0? What's search marketing 4.0? It's not only about you know, building links to your website. It's not only about your content on your website. It's also about um, you know, pretty much getting tweets, getting eyeballs on your content. You want people to find your content. And you can use social networking methods to do that. You could get tweets. You could get Facebook li uh, likes. And you could do lots of methods to actually get these types of things to get more traction and more visibility in your content. Um, it's more about those getting traffic to your site than anything else, and that influences the search results. And you could do that through traditional means. You could do that by handing out business cards. This guy's handing out a business card saying, Google me. Find me on Google. I just do a search, and you'll find me. And, and that, that's important, getting eyeballs that way. Even American Airlines does a billboard um, saying, search for turbulence, and you'll find me. Here's an ad from, from the Super Bowl um, talking about the Chrysler 200. It's the first time the Chrysler announced the Chrysler 200. Um, and it didn't say to anybody, search Chrysler 200. All it said was, the Chrysler 200 has arrived. What happened? You look at Google Trends, which monitors search results over time, you can see there's a huge spike right after the commercial for people saying, I want to learn more about Chrysler 200. People were actually going to Google, typing in Chrysler 200, and finding search results for Chrysler 200. Um, Chrysler never asked anybody to do it, but they were doing it. People are actually searching um, Google without being asked to, obviously. And you got to make sure, as a traditional marketing agency, to make sure that your marketing efforts, your offline marketing efforts, your radio ads, your TV ads, are coming up. And if, if people are searching for that, that you have a web page that actually ranks, or there's an ad that actually ranks for that type of term. If not, you're missing the mark. Your competitors could steal it away from you, or people will be confused and, not, and, and it'll stop right there. And obviously, just people are doing promotions for their Twitter accounts. Again, say you want to promote your Twitter accounts, they're using traditional means to do that, as well as uh, you know, Facebook. People are actually using uh, billboards to uh, promote their Facebook stuff. All of this stuff uh, matters because, again, search engines are using this, this data to re-rank results. Here's a, brick, a Brisk commercial, a popular drink in America, um, that says, you know, see me on Facebook, facebook.com slash brisk. It's not sending somebody to their web page. It's sending somebody directly to their Facebook page. They're spending how much money on a Super Bowl ad, and they put a link to their Facebook page, not to their home page, which shows you the value of social media. And if you think about that, Google and Bing, these search engines know about the value of social media. They know what people like. And to know what people like, it's actually influencing the search results as well. The two takeaways I want you to get from this is, one, if you're doing offline marketing, Make sure you are also doing online marketing and search engine marketing so that whatever message you're trying to get across to your audience in the offline market, TV ads, radio ads, print ads, that if somebody does a search to find out if more information about it, that you have web pages that actually show up in Google and Bing. 
And finally, this all comes back to you. You know, Google, Bing, they're using human elements. The more you do with offline, um, the more it influences your, your online, the more it influences the search results. Thank you very much. Please obviously follow me on Twitter since I'm talking about this. Like me on Facebook.